Okay. That. There we go. Okay. So just re recap again. Thanks to everybody. Second meeting of the SAC uh, Region 4. Um, today's the driving tour. Um, really quick before we get too far into this, just a few quick reminders to everybody that's a panelist. Um, if you're not a panelist, or sorry, yeah, if you're not a panelist, you're just an attendee, you may not have these options. Um, but please, when you're not speaking, uh, just mute yourself um, and we can kind of monitor, uh, make sure everything flows properly there. Um, the, the, the chat will be, uh, will not be monitored, but we will take into consideration um, any comments that are in there. Um, as well as this meeting will be recorded, as previously mentioned, and put up on our hub site, which is aacounty.org slash region four. So then, Ann, I will pass this to you. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to approve the minutes of January 24th, 2020? So yes. moved, Walter Ryder. Do we have a second? Second, Emma Buckman. All in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Okay, minutes have passed and now we'll go to the agenda. Uh, this is just something we do at the beginning of every one of these meetings. Um, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, Emma Buckman. Emma. So second. Second, Tom Hampton. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Passes. Okay. So now we can get on to the region recap. Eric. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, so yeah, as, as Ann mentioned, um, just real quick, we're gonna go through a brief review of what uh, the region plan is. Um, just we had something that we should, I, I think we're gonna do every meeting just to kind of reiterate a few things that are important to the overall process. Um, and then we're gonna talk briefly about the, the timeline and the future meetings. Um, I know everyone here filled out that Google form so we can talk about the results and future meeting dates uh, shortly. Um, and then we'll finally get into the virtual driving tour. That will be the bowl. You're muted. Yeah. Can't hear you, Eric. Eric, we can't hear you. I think your audio went out because he's not muted on the screen, at least on my screen. Tell him to stop. Stop. <laughs> Time out. I, I believe, I, I guess Eric is oh. only, he can. Okay, cool. Great. Let me let me write to him. Okay, sorry, I, my mic goes out, and I'm, I apologize on that. Um, where did you guys le lose me at? Start over. Okay. So quickly, briefly, we're just going to go over the what is the region plan. Um, it just something we can always uh, something we're going to do at every beginning of every meeting, just to reiterate a few different points of what the region plan is. Uh, and then we're going to move right on to the timeline and future meeting. Uh, something we all were able to fill out the Google form, so we'll kind of be able to set up a, a future meeting schedule that's pretty consistent moving forward. And then finally, the bulk. Of Good again. Can't hear. Can't hear. Can't hear. Okay, so I I I'm so sorry. Um, so the, the bulk of the meetings will be the virtual driving tour. I'll just move on from there and we can, we can continue. <clears throat> so again, again, um, here's every, here's all the SAC members. If anybody that wants to reach out, feel free. County staff includes myself. We're still in that recruitment phase for the, the planner too. Um, so right now we are gonna have a lot of help from Lorenzo and Lorenzo, I'll pass it to you. You wanna say a few words? Yes, thanks, Eric. Uh, 
Well, uh, I think I've met all of you already. Uh, again, I'm one of the newest members in OPZ, but yes, I'll be supporting uh, supporting Region 4 efforts uh, as we move along. Uh, and we can go to the next slide, I think. Yes, one of the, the things that we wanted to remind everyone here and, and at home watching is that we do have the Region Plan Hub site uh, that is uh, really a one-stop shop for all um, things region plan related and more because we do cross-reference uh, the, the general development plan, other related plans, uh, because as you all know, uh, there are so many different uh, gears in, in this in this machine that is the, the planning of the entire county, uh, and, but we'll get into that later. But just so uh, you have that reference, I'm just posting in the chat the, the region plan hub uh, link in case you want to click on it later and, and uh, put it in your bookmarks because uh, it does have a lot of information and, and we keep this hub site updated all the time and so you'll see information change as as new new material comes up online uh, this is also uh, some somewhere where you're going to be able to access the feedback map uh, and yes uh, this is uh, this is a, a slide that is showing a, uh, what uh, you will be able to do uh, and the public is gonna be able to do through the feedback map. Uh, it's really a, a tool that is, is meant to uh, contextualize in different geographical areas. Uh, most of the exercise that you all uh, did for today's meeting. So uh, people are at home are gonna be able to uh, click on a specific uh, spot after zooming in and out, uh, and then uh, make a, a drop a pen uh, and, and comment uh, about dream it, hashtag uh, dream it, hashtag fix it, or hashtag love it, uh, and and post uh, some some additional information on that. Now we're gonna have uh, spe uh, region specific uh, feedback maps. This is a, an example of, of the first one that our uh, GIS and research team was working on for. For region two, uh, there's going to be one for region four, uh, and all uh, all of these are going to be coming up online in in, in March. Uh, another good thing about this is, uh, you know, we really listened to some of the feedback we've received in the in the past weeks, uh, and we're going to have uh, these maps advertised in in libraries. Uh, we worked with with the libraries in region four already, uh, and we're going to have a, a booth with information on how to access these maps. And it's very convenient that we're going to do it there because there are also computers that are accessible to the public in case someone uh, needs to, to access uh, the internet and, and other resources to, to see uh, how to um, play this exercise. Any questions about the feedback maps or the region plan hub? Okay. Now, again, another uh, thing we wanted to make sure we were doing uh, tonight, uh, and we will uh, keep uh, talking about these topics. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we all uh, well reminded of what is the, the purpose uh, of the region plans? Uh, what is the region plan? Uh, and, and I really want to start with the, the the picture on the on the right side of the screen uh, with all these gears that I just mentioned earlier. Uh, there is, uh, in terms of accountability for, for local government, really, uh, there are all, all of our departments uh, and in, in Arundel that uh, work on their plans that are long-term, they have to be long-term, uh, and then they get updated in, in uh, smaller increments. Uh, but as you can see, the, the the small area plans are just one part in the geographic master plans uh, section. Uh, but there are so many so many more documents, and sometimes it's easy to uh, to get lost into uh, many different cross references between different uh, different uh, topics uh, that mm, stakeholders and and the community uh, works on. Uh, so I think. One, one good way of uh, thinking about region plans is that we're trying to be uh, geography uh, based. Uh, so if, if we can all uh, 
for a second, uh, instead of going topic by topic, we, we go on a geography level. We all know what region four uh, looks like uh, and, and in terms of boundaries and then all of the many uh, different topics that can be related to transportation. Uh, they're gonna be related to land use. They're gonna be related to the economy, uh, quality of life uh, within a smaller boundary. So it really is about uh, the long term of, uh, com of the community on a smaller scale level that is not possible to address on, uh, on the general development plan as a whole, uh, because it's just, there's just too much information and too many things to, uh, to discuss uh, at, at that stage. Uh, and it's also, I think, a, a great opportunity to think in terms of design, uh, urban design or, or suburban design, uh, what are some of the elements uh, of, of land use and, and uh, bulk and scale regulation that are place specific and not just uh, you know, a color on a map that tells you uh, commercial or residential, but uh, what kind of commercial, what kind of residential and what are some of the different unique characteristics that uh, some communities uh, in, in our region uh, can have and, and what we like. Uh, so I think it's a it's a very great opportunity to to go into some of the more uh, uh, architecturally and and design wise uh, aspects of of everyday uh, things that we see and and live as we move along uh, move around in, in our region. And uh, finally, there are also some some constraints that the region plans have. Uh, so what is not uh, a region plan? A uh, region plan is not uh, a, obviously uh, federal regulations. Uh, it's not state law. Uh, and, and all that we do in, in, uh, in these region plans for Anne Arundel County has to comply with many, many other levels of, of legislation, uh, of policy uh, that is set at different levels of government. Uh, so obviously there are some certain things that are either already taken care of uh, or that uh, can, can be refined in some way or uh, uh, made, uh, progress, made progress, progress on, uh, but not uh, change those or go too much into those because it wouldn't be really a, a good use of uh, your time uh, and, and the, the residents. Uh, also, the regional plans are going to be a policy guide. There's going to be a lot of uh, descriptive uh, language, descriptive images, uh, and uh, they will be adopted, uh, but uh, other implementation tools uh, that you will help uh, craft uh, are going to be uh, attached uh, in, in the form of uh, subsequent ordinances, uh, possibly, or uh, or other materials at later at a later time, uh, but this will be a, really a policy uh, policy document uh, for Region Four. And then finally, uh, the the plans will not uh, address items uh, that are too outside of uh, of the uh, land use and development uh, general uh, general topic. Uh, so there are uh, many many. Uh, boards and commissions that uh, work at the same uh, geographic level a, as the county, but we really are trying to uh, craft a planning document for the long-term vision uh, and of the county as a whole. <clears throat> Thanks, Lorenzo. Um, so just kind of continue on that. Uh, public participation, that's gonna be key, uh, as, as mentioned before. Um, and uh, I forgot to introduce uh, Reese Peak. He's here with us tonight, and he was here with us last last month as well. Um, he's really going to be uh, forefronting a lot of this outreach effort as well from a, a staff perspective. Reese, if you want to say a word or two, I know I'm kind of throwing you on the spot here. Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Reese Peak. I work for uh, County Executive Pittman, and I'm the uh, Community Engagement Officer for Regions. Uh, four, five, and six. So, you know, we're in region four. Um, I attend community association meetings and also work with constituents to um, 
uh, get a process of, or not pro to get feedback from the community on um, things that are working well, things that aren't working well uh, from that perspective. And I assist OPZ in um, outreach endeavors as well, as well as um, providing direct feedback from, from the constituent directly to uh, the county executive. Thanks, Reese. So yeah, um, the, as we've said before, this plan is for the community. It's not for any one person or one group of people. So really just kind of spread the word, get this out there and really kind of help market this. Um, and we can really kind of make this a community plan for everybody. Uh, and, and that being said, um, last meeting we had a Jamboard session and here were the results of all of the different um, uh, input we had from different members from the SAC who put a put sticky note, as well as members of the public who were able to put a couple sticky notes on here and uh, really kind of um, show and describe different areas and groups that uh, they believe we, we should we should really kind of uh, get outreach to. So when we move forward and when, when we start going to different events and different meetings, th these are some areas that we should definitely consider and keep in mind that we should make sure that these people uh, know what's going on. And I will, I will send this out to all the SAC members after this meeting, uh, as well as I will post this link uh, as the, of, of a Jamboard results on the Hub site as well. So if you don't get to write everything down here, no worries, and uh, it'll be out there for your availability. <clears throat> And, and that being said, um, I know a few people here have already started doing different outreach to different organizations, uh, different HOAs, uh, and that's all great. Um, and one thing staff would like to ask you is to uh, please uh, document that. In, on your Google Drive, there is a folder uh, called public outreach or outreach or something along those lines. And when you click that, there'll be a, a Google Sheet in there that has this. So um, once you as an SAC member uh, provide an uh, outreach material at a meeting or you, you know, you, uh, you put, a, put a flyer out somewhere, be sure to let us know, uh, put this down here. So we can, this is gonna be a really cool way and a really engaging way for us to all to understand and see what parts of the region uh, are, are being marketed to and, and where people are getting informed from. Uh, so we want to make sure we hit uh, every square inch of this region. So uh, this is one way we can really kind of make sure we're doing that. And if you have questions or issues, uh, feel free to email me or Lorenzo and we can uh, help you out as best we can. Uh, one other thing that I will be sending out to you tonight or, or tomorrow, I apologize, uh, is this, we have a fact sheet going. Um, and this is a very, this is very broad uh, um, information, it just kind of helps get a basic understanding of the process. And it really helps people uh, understand where to go, the hub sites and other materials that they may find useful to help understand with the, uh, the region plan. Um, you can work, it's a two pager. This is just the example of the first page and you can print it out, get, send it to your friends, family, uh, put it at the grocery store, at your church, wherever. Um, it, I think it's going to be very important for people to really understand um, the region plan process. On that note as well, uh, we, I understand there have been a lot of questions that have been going around about the region plan as a, as a whole, um, different questions from SAC members and different questions from <clears throat> uh, the public as well. Uh, we are working on answering those questions and we're going to provide a FAQ type of segment in a, um, on the hub site. And once those questions are answered, they'll be there and they can really, uh, hopefully uh, we're uh, aiming to help uh, alleviate any confusion and maybe even um, allow for future conversations and additional questions uh, after we have that basic understanding. Additionally, and I'll talk, I'll talk about more of this at the end of the meeting, um, we are going to have a public forum and town hall type event in April. Um, it, you, there will also be an SAC meeting in April, but there will be a public forum event in April, and it's essentially going to be a, a kickoff type event for the public. How uh, each one of you attended the SAC kickoff on, on December 11th, uh, where you were able to kind of meet everybody, have some questions, and really kind of uh, talk with one another and talk to staff. It's the same kind of concept, but on the public level. Um, so the public's going to be able to 
ask questions, learn, learn about the process and get a better understanding for the timeline as well. So we will have more information as we get that kind of set in, in stone and we will be sure to provide each of you with the information moving forward. Lost you. We're lost, Jude. We lost you, Eric. Okay. So, did, were you guys able to hear about the, the fact sheet? Was there a question on that or anything moving forward? I don't think okay. so. So then um, we're, we're back to the schedule. Uh, we are we're still in the same time frame moving forward. This is the same slide as uh, was presented in the first meeting. I just wanted to, uh, to let everybody know we are still moving forward. We, no, no delays at this time and we don't anticipate any hope and hopefully we can just keep going uh, as we move forward uh, again tonight. We are at the, the walking tour or the, the driving tour virtually, um, and we will be continuing the community visioning uh, form and later on in this, in this phase two of the region plan. So for future meetings, um, here is the results of, the, of, of that Google form every SAC member filled out. Uh, essentially, what appears to, to have been the best response are Monday and evening Wednesdays uh, between 6 and 8 p.m. Uh, so moving forward, uh, it, we are going to be doing Monday evenings uh, for, the, for the foreseeable future. And the reason we're picking Monday over Wednesday is there are uh, planning advisory board meetings on Wednesdays. Um, not every Wednesday, but, but most Wednesdays, or, or some Wednesdays anyway. Uh, for example, there's one tonight. Uh, but it, it's dealing with the parole. It happened again, Eric. You're muted. Our next meeting is is uh, going to be scheduled for March 28th. Uh, and if there's any if there's any um, concern or question about that. Uh, I think now would be an opportune uh, opportunity for us to discuss this and make sure the fourth Monday of every month works moving forward. Does anybody have any alternatives or does anybody have any problems with that given uh, the results of this Google form? Do you have a time? Eric, can you hear me? Just yeah. there was a question saying, "Do we have a time?" I assume it's six to eight. Is that correct? Right? It, would, it would be six to eight. Uh, it'd be in the evening as well. Okay. Um, so then we will plan. I will. I will be sending out an invite on March twenty eighth for six to eight p.m. Uh, and then. Uh, every fourth Monday from there, we will plan on meeting. <clears throat> so then finally, where we're getting to be, where we're getting to the, the good stuff of the night, we are getting to the, the PARK exercise. Uh, again, each member, each SAC member tonight was, was able to select up to the four different categories, uh, one for P, one for A, R, and K. And here is the kind of just a brief description of what each letter kind of stands for. Um, so preserve is essentially what do you like in the community and what do you want, what do you want to continue of? And A, add, what do, what do we want more of? Um, R, is there anything we want to remove from the community that is, is, is not helping the quality of life or, or whatever? Um, and K, keep out. Is there something that's not currently here, but we, but we want to make sure we keep it out? So the, the process tonight, we're gonna have each, each presenter go through their slides and then I'm gonna uh, stop sharing so we can all see each other and be able to have a, a brief conversation and discussion 
uh, about those slides from each presenter. Um, just so we can kind of share ideas, uh, maybe discuss different concerns or different different opportunities that we may have and just different thought processes. The, the point of this is really to kind of help build, uh, help a team building exercise as virtually as possible. Uh, I know it's very difficult being on a computer rather than doing this in person, but uh, we wanted to really kind of make an activity where we can all kind of get along and, or get into one area and really have a, a nice, meaningful conversation with one another to really learn about each other in a new way. I think you said, Eric, it's going to be very informal. We don't want people to feel like they have to be called on. We just want you to react and talk and enjoy. Correct. Thanks, Anne. Yeah. So, for example, Bo will be the first to present because it's in alphabetical order um, until Michael. We put him at the end because he, he said he was going to run late. Uh, but Bo, Bo you'll, you'll do your you'll do your slides. Uh, we'll stop sharing the screen and then we'll just have a general conversation, a nice little discussion. And we can uh, kind of just informally talk amongst ourselves uh, about what you just presented. Uh, Steve? Yeah, Eric, uh, are, have you established some kind of a uh, time limit for each one of us since there's so many presentations? Sure. So I would, one of the reasons I think we're doing the one presenter all the way through and then have a discussion is to help with that. Because initially, we, as, as you noted, we're in a two hour time crunch. So hopefully um, there's no set time limit per se. But as long as we're not going on, our, on a, uh, I don't want to, we, we don't necessarily want to limit any productive conversation and any conversation, anything we don't get to tonight, we could get to the next meeting. But it is important um, to definitely be cognizant of our time and, and understand that we are within, we only have an hour and a half left. So we can kind of take it in. But Anne, if, if you want to limit it, since you're a future, if you have a proposed time limit per presenter, that's something we can definitely do as well. So. Why don't we start without a time limit and maybe we'll need a time limit as we move along. Okay, great. So since there's no other questions, one thing I wanted to do first right away is really just kind of do an icebreaker because the point of this is to really start conversation uh, with 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 you all and kind of get the, the ball rolling a little bit. So if you guys can take about 30 seconds and really just think what your perfect community is, what are some elements of this community? And there's no wrong answer. Um, just really think to yourself, when you close your eyes, what kind of community do you want to live in? What kind of community Lost you, Eric. You're muted. Lost you, Eric. Okay, so essentially just take, take about a minute, half a minute and think about your perfect community. Where do you wanna, what do you, what to, what do you wanna live in? Where do you wanna uh, experience life in? Uh, what really, what really do you find exciting uh, about a community? So does, does anybody care to share? Just, to, just spit all their ideas. There's no wrong answers here. Uh, what comes to mind? Uh, what are some your, what are some aspects and qualities of this community that you've just thought of? Okay, I'll bite. So. Um... It was, uh, I was just reading a news feed and it was, there was, um, it was this beautiful town square, people out there drinking coffee, having a beer, eating lunch, talking with their neighbors, sun was shining. I imagined that it was easy to walk to um, and you had a lot of what you needed right there, including community connection, maybe some live music every now and then um street parties um and that's that's what i imagine i uh, go ahead sorry i imagine something very similar to walter um but i would add that um i i imagined a place i, I liked walter's description a lot because it was much it was about comfort and not comfort just in the geographic sense, but also in the what was provided from the community to the individual. Um, and I imagine a place of where um, community is, is always the most important, but individuality is celebrated, that differences are celebrated, and that, you know, the hard conversations we need to have in life, like with racism, 
are had openly and honestly and um, were able to move forward with things. So just a place where we're all able to communicate with each other and build together instead of friction and yeah. I see John has his hand raised. Right. Can you see my picture? I don't see my picture, the video. No, it's no, just I, your name. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I had trouble with sound. Now I'm having trouble with the video. Uh, my apologies for that. And the comment I wanted to make, I spoke with a couple of my uh, Transportation Commission buddies over the last couple of days. And we all, I think, agreed that what is missing in our Region 4 is there's no really community point for people to come together. There's no focus in either Pasadena or not maybe kind of in Severna Park and but not in in Arnold it's just like uh, it's kind of Ritchie Highway is a main highway and there, there's a lot of activity on that but it's not a place where people can come together and certainly I've gone crazy the last two years with all the face masking I, I'm more than ready to have in-person meetings too so uh, one of my visions is to be a place where people can come together and meet in person without face masks. So I just saw in the chat, Emma, Emma agrees. And then uh, Shayla also mentioned walkable communities. Is there anything else you want to add on to that, Shayla? Just um, kind of like everyone's saying, just an opportunity for everyone to come together. And I, one of the things I love about the neighborhood that I'm in is my ability to walk to different locations within my community. And I'm looking forward, like I said, to the trail kind of providing more opportunities to connect all of our different communities and neighborhood. And then kind of bringing all together what everyone's kind of sharing is then having that community gathering spot, a larger place where without having to worry about building more parking lots, a place we can all walk to and meet at to enjoy, like they said, like live music, uh, food gathering, things like that without having to cross over Richie Highway or something like that. <laughs> okay, great. Um, is there anybody else that wants to share before we get right on into this? Um, there's no wrong answers here. I think um, my perfect community um, respects history in terms of um, incorporating history into like design, and but then also is um, forward thinking as well. All right, thanks, Lauren. Uh, Holly, I see your hands up. Yes, I totally want to echo um, the walkable community. We have a particular section in Severna Park on Jumpers Hole, which is terrifying. I've seen moms with babies try and walk it and it is really narrow, but they're just trying to get to the park. So walkable community for sure. Um, and then also maybe a working microphone for Eric. That would be great. I appreciate that. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, Bo? Uh, yeah, I would say um, anybody that knows me would, would uh, know that I would say this, but I basically live, I think, in a, in, in a perfect community, minus a, probably a couple things. But uh, like Shayla, we live in the same place. There's plenty of nowadays access to walk and ride bikes, uh, and hopefully we'll connect further down to Sandy Point and over to B&A Trail if they continue. But inside the community where you have a shopping center, a place that people can gather, uh, both Two, two out of your three schools, which creates a lot of sense of community, the parades for the high schools, the things like that. We, of course, do a strawberry festival and have seven to 10,000 people come through on a weekend. Um, you know, we're a community of almost 8,000 people to begin with. And, and we have a focus around the waterfront amenities, uh, access to multiple beaches, parks, and um, yeah, boat ramp and, and uh, other waterfront amenities that many obviously want. Uh, you know, living here in Anne Arundel County. So uh, I, I'm not going to say it's 100% perfect. There's always room for improvement and discussions and forward thinking, but uh, a lot of that exists and, and it'd be nice to see others have that same opportunity. All right. Th thanks, Bo. Uh, Tom? There's, there's really one thing that sticks out in my mind, having lived, lived here my whole life, and that is too many cars on the road. And um, I don't know really how we go about addressing that, but it's uh, it's incredibly different than it was 
probably 20 years ago and certainly 40 years ago. Oh my God, what a difference. Great. Okay. Um, well, I think, I think that's a good uh, icebreaker to kind of get the, 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 the talkative juices flowing. Um, so again, uh, how we're going to do this is each person is going to present all four of their slides. Uh, feel for, uh, when, when I, since I will be sharing my screen, just give me an, uh, a sign, tell me to, to move the slide and I'll move it for you whenever you're finished. Um, and we'll go from there. So if there's no other questions before we get started, uh, Bo, you will be up first. You're going to share these a bit. Um, so uh, first, the first slide I have, uh, and and I will uh, want to thank Steve Miller. Uh, we we've worked on the Broadneck Council for a while, uh, back and and uh, we've reviewed a bunch of things that we we work with on the Broadneck Council on identifying areas in particular on the Broadneck Peninsula. But um, in order to preserve um, shoreline resiliency, obviously uh, climate is changing, sea level rises, all things that uh, discussions are are being had. But in order to protect Anne Arundel County, that has uh, you know 530 miles, or as they say, of a uh, uh, coastline, um, a majority of that I, I believe is in Region Four. Um, so building and uh, planning for coastline resiliency to help communities um, is a, is a major thing. Understanding the issues at hand, uh, a reason to visit. The pictures you're actually looking at uh, are actually the uh, one and a half million dollar beach project that we just led. On our shore, on our two two beaches uh, that just wrapped up uh, today, actually after uh, eight and a half years of planning and permitting and funding, and and so um, with a uh, nearly a thousand square foot, um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, and fifteen hundred feet of beach lines improved and all, uh, but uh, other things created uh, fish habitat and um, shoreline restoration, a variety of things. But so we we could always have somebody out there, but it's one project of many different types that are needed in the different uh, that WPRP I know has been handling uh, a lot across the county and we need more of it. You can go to the next slide or somebody can talk about it. That was um, living on the, the east end of the Broadneck Peninsula and obviously uh, here in this area, Route 50, but also the Chesapeake Bay Bridge is obviously a major point of contention for many people and obviously the side state roads and uh, county roads that, that are St. Margaret's, East College Parkway, White, Whitehall. Um, obviously, there's been a study ongoing, tier one NEPA study, uh, been, been ongoing since Hogan uh, began that in 2017. Uh, there's replacement spans that are needed to replace the two bridges. But uh, in the notes that I included in the slideshow itself, it's not just about the bridge replacement. There's also, in my opinion, um, we need to really understand the land use, the, the impact of state and county roads, the coordination of lane movements, uh, especially on the western shore that impact us, that the eastern shore has done some things to address theirs. Um, and, and in particular, trying to convince the state as a county that they also some need another crossing, not in our county, not just in another location in our county, but outside our county uh, for the health of the uh, both economics, you know, for the and safety really at the end of the day and moving, as Tom mentioned, all those cars uh, that keep having to come down Route 2 or Route 50 uh, to reach the Bay Bridge to keep going east, uh, need another place to move them across the Bay at some point in time. But so that's sort of an ad, an ad here and an ad somewhere else. Next up, uh, remove. Um, Worked on this a lot the last nine years in the capacity of the Broadneck Council uh, and the current cluster development that we have in Interroad County is not working. If you think it's working, I'd love to discuss that with you, but um, is smart growth producing the results intended? Do we want to be the next Frederick, Waldorf, or PG County or Montgomery County? Is that what we're aiming for? Um, the way cluster development works uh, currently uh, has reduced forest conservation in many developments. We see the modifications granted in the past. It probably needs, we, we really need to, you know, view some different places. This is actually a development on the Brunick Peninsula off of East Joyce Lane, um, but assessing traffic design, the lots, the road, open space requirements, foreign preservations, and something near and dear. I know to Steve's heart, 
uh, and many of us is the uh, the stormwater management controls and the buffer controls uh, that often get left to these communities who don't have the money to maintain them after a few years. I know the county is working on addressing that with HOAs and, and developers, but there's a lot to be done in order to make it better and so that we don't end up with lots of runoff in our streams and our, and our, our rivers. Um, so it requires code changes, eventually uh, you know, minimizing or eliminating modifications to many developments. Uh, and there's lots that pop up. You obviously can go on the Anne Arundel County website and take a look at that. Um, but that, you know, that's, that's in my, removing that and changing cluster development is important in my opinion. And keep out, and I don't know how many of you are familiar with this issue. It's sort of a hot topic down on the end of the Broadneck. Uh, Holly Farms, which is a managed property by um, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Um, there's been interest uh, by some local officials uh, in making Holly Farms a, and coordinating it for greater public use, obviously, but water access, which, you know, all can be discussed, but also for other, other amenities and or um, more access to, obviously, the waterway. But with Sandy Point on one side and almost identically across the street on the other side of Route 50 to have another park that locks up the traffic at the end of a peninsula as we hit the Bay Bridge. Um, it needs a lot of land use, state and county road impact and coordination between the future spans of the Bay Bridge, uh, existing issues that, that go on and leaving it as is as a protected environmental area with education as its primary goal and, and, and resource, uh, you know, Kind of a pristine property for the most part, um, the quality of life issue that I think a lot of them on that end of the Broadneck Peninsula, if they're not aware of it, uh, will become aware of it if this discussion continues to uh, meander through the public realms. Okay, thanks, Bo. Um, I'm going to stop sharing here for a second so we can have uh, a kind of a group conversation. Um, does anybody have any thoughts, opinions, ideas? Anything Bo just kind of ran, uh, discussed? Bo, what did the A stand for again? Add. Thank you. It seems to me that traffic and roads uh, Infrastructure. Are, huge, are huge. And uh, I've heard, and I think it's true, that building more roads doesn't really give you less traffic. People just, more people come to cars. And so I think we should try to make bikeways and you know some of these highways have no good crossing so i just think traffic here is is uh, we don't have much um you know uh buses or any other kind of way to get around so and if we don't get something besides cars it'll just keep getting more and more crowded so that's all i have to say about that when you live on a peninsula as those in pasadena surrender park and ourselves in Broadneck. There's only limited spaces you can go. You either have to build more bridges to create more connections or you need to find alternatives. I second Bo on the uh, whole Chesapeake Bay Bridge thing. I've been keeping a good eye on that. Um, before I ended up in Anne County, I was in Prince Frederick down in Calvert. And as someone who has family on the Eastern shore, I've heard both sides on a regular basis, but nothing like driving, feeling like a hundred miles up from coming up from Prince Frederick just to come all the way in Anne Arundel County, just to go all the way across the bridge. And literally, I was like, if we just got on the boat, we could have got to grandma's house much faster because we can see the Western Shore right there. And so just kind of funny to me how they just keep ignoring the whole connecting that part of Maryland, but they just want to keep running it through Anne Arundel County. <laughs> I think people saw what it did to Anne Arundel County and they don't want it to come to their their home. And well, I don't I mean, know that they look too hard at other places. So, Obviously, there's been a long discussion on it, studied multiple times since the 70s. And obviously, the most recent NEPA study is the, uh, the, the legal study that has to be done from a federal standpoint in order to both get money, but to qualify for the uh, environmental impact statement that's required for infrastructure like this. And, you know, at that point in time, you know, there's, there's three different challenges. There's money, there's land ownership, and there's environmental impact. Uh, and uh, money, money and power is the political side and the fact that the Eastern Shore owns a, owns a veto power over any toll road 
connections. The only place the state owns on both sides in the same spot is where it exists today. And then obviously, you know, you can argue about imp impact of paving over farms and or other sensitive areas or paving over more areas that are likely already paved or so it's a tough argument. Unfortunately, we haven't made a lot of progress in finding ways to move it elsewhere. But, you know, the, the admittance of the state that the two spans will not last another 40 years without seven or eight billion dollars in investment when a bridge becomes a cheaper option uh, that may handle the traffic and moving it at least at this point. But, you know, what happens between Bowie and Easton and around is other discussions and outside my pay grade. Hey, Bo, I think especially okay. since we're volunteers. <laughs> so. Go ahead. I just wanted to thank him for um, bringing up modifications and we should stop allowing so many modifications, especially to the detriment of the community. So thank you for that, Bo. Bo, uh, in terms, this is Tom, uh, in terms of shoreline resiliency, I suppose that that means stopping erosion. Um, to, to an extent, yes, but making the shoreline by developing living shorelines, uh, other areas that makes it more resilient to larger storm action re responding, much like they've done like in the Carolinas and their bays. Um, we hardscape a lot of stuff up here and, uh, you know, there's a combination of things that are going to work and not work, but learning more and doing more and in particular after the nightmare of uh, permitting the last few years that I've been through in Cape St. Clair to get that project through, uh, getting the state to, you know, after a report today that just showed that they're well behind their 2025 goals of nitrogen and pollution. Uh, in order to save the bay, you're gonna have to have some streamlined permitting to get these projects through uh, also. But I think there's a numerous ways you can look at it, whether you're protecting a city downtown, you know, or communities like ours or uh, waterfront communities along any river, really. You're gonna yeah, need I, new, new ideas. It's just having having lived on the Magathy my whole life, pretty much. It's uh, every every creek is different, um, yep. and it's I've looked over the years at things that happen, and there's a lot of stuff that I just I'm amazed constantly at the hardening of the shorelines that in a small creek just appear to be absolutely unnecessary. So I don't disagree with you, uh, but I do, I, I wonder who's really in control or who really has the say over what gets done. Well, the, the good thing is more and more money is going to softer things. And that's where you can get grants and things like that and programs. But, you know, it does matter if you have a 33 mile fetch up the bay, like we do, it's entirely different than the second project we did, which is on the inside of the Magathy at Deep Creek where the fetch is less than three miles off Gibson Island and entirely different wave action movement, um, you know, study of hydrology, the, the literal sand drift literally changes, um, you know, so it, all things to look at and every spot's gonna be different, but, you know, uh, between the money and the permitting and the timing, it takes, you know, if it takes eight years to get a project off, that's, you know, that's a lot of time to, <laughs> 2040s, only 20 years out, you're only gonna, you're only going to get two sets of projects in. Right. Well, I'm going to jump in here real quick. Uh, we are kind of um, <clears throat> going to be on a time crunch in a little bit. So I'm trying yep. to just push this up a little bit, if that's okay, well, with Ann and everybody else. Um, I'm passing the torch. Emma? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Cool. Um, so um, for mine, to preserve what is positive and should be kept. I said things like Park Plaza, where there is a lot of um, different small um, owned businesses. Um, I know that it's not the best example. It was the best example I could find of Park Plaza, but I know that there are a lot of really big um, brand name stores on that, but you can also see a lot of the um, independently owned stores as well. And I think that's really important um, is to have a lot of small businesses. Um, and uh, I think the like if just another idea, one thing that we could do to, in, to make that even better is to think of ways to bring in more minority owned businesses to the area as well. Um, and um, this is, I guess, more in keeping things out, but to, you know, continue encouraging growth of small businesses and discouraging welcoming larger corporations coming in. Um, you can go to the next slide. 
So uh, this is um, what John was mentioning earlier. Um, we have the Severna Park Community Center. Sorry, there are kids playing upstairs if you can hear any banging. <laughs> but um, uh, we have the Severna, the Severna Park Community Center. And one of the, when I told uh, my colleagues who live in Severna Park that I was on the committee, the first thing they said was, well, we need a, a place to, to meet and be with each other and have like community activities, a place where kids can go play and, and things like that. And we, it's true, we do have the community center, but it's, you have to pay for everything. And so it's not exactly accessible, especially to lower income families in the county. And so I just agree with John that we need a central meeting place in pr probably multiple in Severna Park and Pasadena and Arnold in order to just create more of that community atmosphere and to offer free activities for local kids and, and what have you. Um, you can keep going. Um, so to remove, um, there was, to be honest, this was the one I had the most trouble thinking of. Um, so I had to get input from other people on this one, but there's a group of foreclosed properties that look foreclosed and have looked foreclosed for many, many years that are on, if you're coming across Route 2 southbound on Ritchie Highway right before East West Boulevard, um, there's just a bunch of foreclosed properties or properties that look foreclosed. And um, I, I don't know what their purpose is, but I'm sure that there's a way that we could, um, you know, if the, like, I don't, this is, a, as Bo said about my pay grade at this point, but I'm sure there's ways that the county could use to, for the betterment of the community, like maybe new community garden or something. Um, and then the last one. This one is the one that hits closest to home for me. So I think this is part of, this is just my belief that this is part of the traffic problem too. I wholeheartedly agree with everyone, what everyone said with traffic. I think that we're building too many houses and having too many families and people come in and we don't have enough room to accommodate all of the cars and traffic that they bring. And I point this route out specifically because I, my best friend, since I've been, since I lived in Samara Park, I've had a best friend. Um, we've been friends for 21 years. She lived on this street and the picture you can see higher up is what across the street looked like. And it doesn't look exactly pretty, but it's forest land. There's, it's a habitat for a lot of animals that live here. And that entire thing was um, chopped down to make room for what you see in the bottom image, which is a bunch of houses. Um, and it just, it, I, I also remember um, in the, I was working on a campaign on in the 2018 election. And that was a lot of things that constituents brought up too, was the adding of new housing developments and there's just not room for them. And um, it takes away from the natural environment um, that's already dwindling. So um, yeah, that's that's my park evaluation. Emma, I had a question for you. The, the um, community that you just shown us, shown us in the slide, was that a cluster development? Because I know Severna Park has had a lot of cluster developments and the lots are so small that sometimes a road is almost behind the house. And uh, there's very little environmental benefit. And there is a new bill going through the county council that will change that. And particularly if we all pay attention to it, to get rid of these tiny, tiny lots that uh, well, if you haven't yeah. seen it in Severna Park, that's where you can really see some of this, some of the property uses that I think are not good for the short or long term. So. Yeah, I don't know if they're a cluster because I, I actually, to be honest, never heard of that term before tonight. But, um, but it is. I will say that it's a very small strip of land. I don't know how they fit houses on because they fit them on like corners and on. Arundel Beach Road, they've added a new home and there's really no accessibility on Arundel Beach Road except for the for the road. So I don't know why there's a benefit of adding a house there anyway. Well, Holly, uh, yeah, if you have your hand raised, I don't know who was first. I'm sorry, John, I don't know who you got there first. <clears throat> Holly, go ahead. Oh, you're on mute. I thought it was my computer again. <laughs> yeah. I'm Get ready. you a new one. I like the community. Um, thank you, Emma, for that, for your slides. I like the um, community center. And as someone who is about to go pick up my daughter from that community center, I will tell you, and I have no solution for this, but 
the traffic is insane. There are like, they're swimming, there's dancing. My daughter's at theater and trying to pick up those kids is a nightmare. I mean, it's, it's packed and there's no system and it, it all sounds great and fine and dandy to have a community center where everyone can go, but the logistics of picking up and dropping off and all, all that stuff are a nightmare. So um, it's just, I just wanted to mention that there's those details there that we forget that I forget too. And I'm like, oh, that sounds great. And then when you think about it in actual practice, it's like, oh my God, I have to go pick up Elsie in 45 minutes and I'm going to be sitting through traffic, you know, trying to fight every other parent off for the one parking spot there is to pick up their kid. So just oh, thought I'd know, bring that up. I know that area pretty well. And I just wondered if there are any safe crossings to get, no, I mean, I don't think there's any walkable crossings across to get to the community center. I mean, if you, if I tell her to like meet me at Woods parking lot or meet me like certain places, but it's just, and, and there's, there, there are solutions, but I'm just wondering if in general, there's more solutions that like the county could have about that kind of particular um, type of entity, I guess, or type of building or type of program uh, that can be streamlined versus trying to always kind of like figure it out ourselves if we're talking about ideal community. Right. Uh, John? Yes, thank you. Uh, I'd love to talk about traffic congestion and I know we're gonna spend a lot of time on traffic congestion later on. One point I wanted to bring up now is as what a couple of you touched on already and that is really what is our growth rate for Anne Arundel County. And I was surprised. I don't think there's many people that are as crazy as I am but I tried to read through the whole 400, 500 pages, whatever it was of the GDP. And I didn't, obviously, I have some sanity and, but I did scan the entire thing. And I was looking for, to me, the most fundamental thing in a general development plan is what is your rate of growth? It seems like everything would feed into the general, what, it, what your annual growth rate is going to be. And when I researched it, uh, I also found in volume two, which is background, it's not the plan per se, it does talk about that the average growth rate for the last 10 to 15 years has been 0.7%. And other research is uh, Frederick County, for example, Bo mentioned it's one and a half percent, so double our rate of growth. But I hope that in this, before all this said and done for region four, that we talk about what we think a, a reasonable growth rate would be. I know a lot of people generally are anti-growth, but the question I ask is, where do you want your kids to live? We had them. I think it's been, we've been trying, I've been trying to find out the same kind of question, John, what's the growth policy? And um, I don't think we absolutely have one. We want to put new development in good places, but uh, I, I've read some books about how you can become like every other town if you have nice things for, that people want to live there and you know and you just keep building and building and building and building then you're just like everywhere in USA and so I worry about keeping some of the well some of the things we all talked about when we had the kickoff of the natural you know features and if we can't even get there um, you know it's a problem All right, thank you guys. Um, we'll go right along. Uh, Lauren? Hey, can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so um, for Preserve, I included um, the BNA Trail and um, the Broad Neck Trail because uh, they're great areas for recreation and then also for um, you know walking or biking to local shopping centers instead of using cars. Um, although it is definitely um, underutilized, but there are bus stops all along Ritchie Highways. And I know uh, I used to work with people who did take the bus in region four, it does exist, but I think there could be more to support it. So I just wanted to make note of that. Like there are people that do, um, use non-car public transportation in the region, but um, you know, the bike trails are another way to get around. Um, and 
You can go to the next slide. Right, the bus shelters need to be improved. I totally agree, Melissa. Um, the the flip side of the BNA trail, like the access point at Arnold Station, it might be because of runoff, um, but there's just a strip of rocks um, directly in front of where the cars are parked. And I ha um, think it's a little dangerous because your options are walking over the rocks down a slight slope and then you get to the paved trail or you walk down further and there is there are pavers that you can walk across the grass in and then there's a trail or you can walk in the parking lot but sometimes there's other vehicles um and you have to navigate that so i have a friend who's blind and it's you know difficult to guide her in that area but we both really enjoy walking the BNA trail so we do it anyway. Um, it's just thinking about accessibility for all people like that I thought is something to consider. You can go forward. Okay, so I um, grew up in Glen Eden and um, this is in the woods um, behind my parents' house in Glen Eden and it's close to Gilbert Road in Arnold and I think that for many years, um, people just left trash in the woods. And I think a lot of it is farming equipment, but it's also like hundreds, if not thousands of glass bottles. And then also um, a lot of China that says Howard Johnson on the back of it. I think it was from the hotel that used to be on 50 around there. Um, and um, that's just a fun fact. Um, I don't know like what the deal with this sort of thing is, like who owns this tract of land, but it's right by Mill Creek and Mill Creek fills in, uh, feeds into the bay. Um, and you can go on. Uh, so there's plans for a drive-through only Chick-fil-A um, near the CVS and Arnold Road um, and Ritchie Highway um, opposite Arnold Station. Um, I, I, it just makes me concerned about getting in and out um, of that area. It's just already pretty busy. And uh, just another thought I have is that um, like we, everyone here like wants to build community and uh, a lot of um, mention of places to meet and congregate, but um, I think that it would be important to try to create things like that within existing spaces and not um, developing new areas because the flip side of that is that everyone feels like um, the traffic or like the growth has become unmanageable. Um, so those are my slides. Thank you. Just uh, referencing the Chick-fil-A thing, I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> and um, just given how much traffic uh, builds up at the one in Severna Park and how it much, I've seen it impede traffic on Ritchie Highway in general, it's, I can only imagine having two of those um, and I, one I'll in Arnold. Slide, I'll have a slide of Chick-fil-A when I get off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and you're actually next. And before we get going again, um, I was gonna, I might, it's okay if we do your idea, maybe do two or three presenters at a time and then have the discussion. We are going to kind of, I think, worry, get close yeah, to the eight o'clock mark. There's a lot of overlap, um, fortunately, and I think that can make it go faster. But um, yeah. So then if it's okay with you, uh, we'll do three presenters at a time, then open it up for discussion. Right. Just take a few notes so that you, you know, know remember what, what they said. But yeah. I think that's good. Any other comment on Lauren's? No. All right. All right, Anne. Uh, okay. Okay. I found that there are a lot of uh, trail issues, or people like the tr bike trails, and this is a fairly new park, right near uh, Route Two and across from college, um, the community college. And I just think that 
we need more kind of places like this could be a small gathering and to support more money for parks and help transit. So um, there have been about several other, oh, and this one, well, yeah, go ahead. This one, go, go to the next one. A lot of my stuff has to do with Ritchie Highway. And um, I thought this is a, a fairly dense, fairly new housing development that's right on Ritchie Highway. And I've lived here for over 40 years. And um, we hear from planning and zoning that we should only have commercial at nodes, sort of crossroads. But, but and there are people who want to have Ritchie Highway be totally commercial. From Severna Park down to Route 50, there's still a lot of trees, a lot of grass, a lot of open space and housing. And I, this is a fairly new apartment, like, uh, not, not apartment, looks like uh, townhouses. So I just think it would be nice to try to not make Ritchie Highway into total commercial because look what happens to Route 3 with all their commercial. And so that's why it's here, add that, add that. Um, so the wall of signs, I couldn't get the best picture, but uh, I know we have a sign ordinance and it probably isn't too enforced and it, I think it's very complicated. But again, it, it doesn't add to the, uh, you know, the appearance or the uh, nice ride on Route 2. So um, I, I just think that's something we could... I know that Severna, Greater Severna Park Council worked really hard to get a sign ordinance, but I think it was so complex that it was hard to enforce or people didn't know how, what was, you know, enforceable or not. So it's a problem. And then, oh, then my next slide. Okay. <laughs> this is the Chick-fil-A in Severna Park. And I got there when there wasn't a lot of traffic, but they have two drive through lanes and they do still have their restaurant open. What, what I experienced on Jumpers, because I like Chick-fil-A, I went to Jumpers on Jumpers Hole Road, and they have two solid lanes of traffic with people out there taking orders, taking orders, and all delivery trucks. And I got to the front door, and it's like, it's closed. They don't, they're not opening it now. And I don't think it's COVID, uh, because what we did hear about the one that's supposed to want to come to Arnold right below the CVS on that side of the road is that uh, that's their model now. They're not going to have a restaurant. They're going to have, maybe they'll have some because Serena Park still is open, but the one they're planning for Arnold is just a drive through, you know, more cars, more cars, more people and deliveries. And um, the traffic problems with that I see as being horrible. So I thought maybe there's a way to, change parking requirements or change something. So sit down restaurants may have an edge some way uh, over places like this that are such a big volume uh, and cause so much traffic. So I don't know any other good ideas. If you have any, think about it for when we come back to the talk part. So I'm finished with that. All right. Thank you, Ann. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Melissa? Hi, uh, for my keep um, is the Jonas and Anne Catherine Green Park, which is right down at the bottom of the Broadneck Peninsula near the Naval Academy Bridge. And this is just a beautiful small park with, you know, benches, a fishing pier, water access, um, picnic tables and grills. It's just, you know, a nice place where people can hang out, gather, and do stuff. And I just think that's a really nice use of that piece of land. Um, what is missing? I just, I, when I moved to Maryland to Anne Arundel County, I just did not understand why there aren't more sidewalks here. Um, this was three pictures and just like an hour driving around. Um, people trying to jog, somebody trying to ride a bike, um, obviously not for recreation, but trying to travel somewhere um, on the right, which is uh, between College 
Parkway and Route 50, a really dangerous place to ride. There's really no um, bike lane there. Um, and then somebody else trying to walk across uh, on, on St. Margaret's Cape St. Clair Road to um, towards College Parkway over 50. Um, I just think, you know, with all the traffic problems we're talking about, we need to make it easier and safer for people to get around. Um, you can go to the next one. Okay. Um, I'm just really turned off by the huge parking lot development shopping centers. Um, let's see, the one on the lower left is out on Route 50. Um, just not a good use of that land. It's on um, Whitehall Road and I've been here for 20 years and a lot of times there have been empty storefronts there. There's a residential community behind it and it's not at all connected to that community. People would have to walk all the way around to walk there. Um, and the same with Saverna Park, the top uh, picture and the one on the bottom right are like the Coles shopping center. And the bottom right is where the community that's behind that shopping center, they if they were able to walk there, they're greeted by the loading dock. It just has no connection to the community. And I just think this is like right smack in the middle of Saverna Park. You could have beautiful, you know, shopping areas with community, you know, meeting spaces or green spaces and trees and shops. And instead it's just this huge parking lot. Um, and then the last one, keep out. Um, basically this is a picture of my neighborhood, a residential neighborhood traffic backed up through the streets and um, this is from Route 50 overflow and I've, you know, seen cars when it gets crowded like this, there's license plates from DC and Virginia. People are just trying to get through Anne Arundel County, like somebody mentioned earlier, driving up from Virginia here. And with now all the ways and everything, they're cutting through residential communities. It's really, not good. Um, my community did put a no left turn sign onto St. Margaret's Road, which has helped a little bit, but then it just moves the traffic somewhere else. I feel like we need to do something major to, to help with the traffic problem on the Broadneck Peninsula. And that's it. Thanks, Melissa. <clears throat> and then uh, Kevin. Sure. <clears throat> so for my preserve, I did um, park spaces in Arnold, uh, Severna Park and Pasadena. Uh, this, our region just seems to have a abundance, which is a good thing of, of park spaces that are fairly accessible to a lot of communities in my, at least in my opinion, um, to some degree, obviously there's missing connections throughout. So um, just a couple Cactail Creek, which is kind of just an open space um, it's hard to access, access that one, but Cypress Creek, Mega Vista, um, and then Ticknick and Lake Waterford there. So mm -hmm. it's just nice to have these areas. And this is only, I, I did a quick search on Park and Recreation's website. I mean, there's probably oh, five to 10 for each, you know, Pasadena, Arnold, and Severna Park. There's probably five to 10 of these properties each. So, all right, that's good. Thank you, Eric. Let's go to the next one. All right. So, add and this gets back to um, kind of Melissa's last comment about you know some of the large expansive parking lot commercial development um, along Ritchie Highway and everywhere else not saying that this picture necessarily summarizes what we want to see but um, I just did a quick google search here mixed land use um, mixed use development so obviously if we want to transform our commercial spaces I think you have to add incentive to do that. Otherwise, you're just going to keep getting the same commercial use 
you know, low rise commercial turned over again and again. So to, one of the components to doing that obviously is adding a residential use piece to that. So mixed use gets us there, gets you, you know, you could use the mixed use development as your community focal point, um, your meeting place, nice commercial, you know, shopping um, and some residential mixed in there. So. And then my remove kind of just in tandem with the ad and what's already been touched on here. So I won't spend too much time on it, but just underutilized parking areas for commercial development. Um, it's just clearly this aerial kind of shows you, um, this is just kind of Severna Park Center, if you will. You can go to Pasadena and you can go into Arnold and Broadneck Peninsula and find similar places. Um, a lot of times, except for, you know, one month out of the year, maybe not even now, pretty much, but maybe one month out of the year, this parking is being utilized. I think we could find a better way to maybe calculate our parking or just the land use itself. All right. And then uh, keep out, I guess, I, maybe this isn't keep out, but remove or try to change uh, just pedestrian crossings and access. This is on Robinson Road. Um, and I've noticed just being in the area, this is one of the more dangerous ones I've seen in the summertime. Um, of the BNA trail crossing. It's just kind of, it's an easy one to miss if you're not paying attention, you're not used to it on Robinson. This goes up and down through Pasadena, Arnold, Serena Park. Uh, the BNA has crossings everywhere. So and just in general, pedestrian access and safety. All right, that's good. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> thanks, Kevin. Um, so it seems there was a uh, everyone. A lot of people agree with the the Chick Fil A comments. So, are there any other conversation topic points that you might would like to to discuss among the three presenters we just had? Melissa, I definitely agree with you with the lack of sidewalks. Like even still in Central Maryland, like if you are in um, parts of Howard County, there are much more sidewalks. Um, and um, it's just something to consider with region four. There, there's some history of that too. I mean, part of our sidewalk issue in region four has a lot to do with the development patterns. I mean, mo a lot of our older neighborhoods were built in the forties and fifties, um, sixties, when sidewalks just weren't something that were utilized and put in so much. So that's just a piece to think about. It, it's expensive as you right. talk to, you know, so yeah, just a thought. I guess just to tack on to that is the county didn't fall under its current commission and charter until 1964. So anything built before that was not forced to consider any of those different aspects. There has been no money set aside in 60 years to consider it to old communities. So you're not just looking at an infrastructure issue. You're looking at purchasing mass amounts of land uh, in order to put that infrastructure back in. And, and I'll use Cape St. Clair Road as an example. When they added the Broadneck Trail connector and the sidewalks on the other side, it took about 13 years to purchase that, that land before they could get to the construction after it was approved in 99. And it cost upwards of $700,000 to purchase the sidewalk areas. Um, and it, so it delays infrastructure to go back to other areas if you could have newer places connected in different manners. That's been one of the struggles the county has had for 60 years. Thanks, Kevin and Bo. It's really interesting. Um, All right. Um, could, I, could I join just for one minute here to, uh, in terms of the drive throughs like Chick fil A? Um, my perspective on that for years has been that when you're sitting in a drive through like that, you are expelling exhaust that contains a lot of nitrogen and in addition to all the traffic we have as it is, nitrogen, when it enters, it comes, runs off of our roads and goes into our creeks and rivers. And it is a major factor in killing our rivers. And on the Western shore, uh, I mean, that's certainly a big deal. And the Magathy certainly has its problems with it. Holly, is Holly, uh didn't you chat that, that they also got rid of the playground equipment at the Chick-fil-A in Severna Park? I mean, so yeah. it's becoming, uh, <laughs> you know, 
I don't know. And it seems to favor cars, you know, over people. Well, I think that was COVID though, too, is that it they lost be. money and stuff becoming a central place because I guess of liability. I thought that, but, but I went to the meeting about the one to come in Arnold and they're talking about years from now, you know, and it's not COVID that that's their model now. Maybe not everywhere. Maybe they have some with you oh. know continuing restaurants, but some are just going to be. COVID changed around. that restaurants realize they could be profitable by just being a takeout scenario and not providing space to cost money and yeah. be updated, cleaned, maintain more employees. And if you have a lack of employees in a business model like restaurants, that's a huge issue. It's a labor shortage. Don't have the space. You don't need the people. So it's more than just COVID, but COVID probably make us. To make it more efficient, that's a big part of the conversation. It's hard to legislate that. Well, Steve, you have your hand up. Yeah, uh, two things that Ann brought up that I'd like to piggyback on. You know, uh, you showed the picture of the pocket park that's there at Peninsula Farm Road and College Parkway. There's also another one that's down by the Broadneck Library. And, and then there's a, a, a place there behind the big bean pedal pushers there on the BNA trail by Severna Park. I think all three of those areas were privately funded. Uh, I think that they were all part of memorials that were either done by families or people mm -hmm. who contributed for, uh, for a different reason. But, um, you know, right now there is a survey that's out there for the walk and roll initiative, which is the update of the PED and bike uh, pedestrian plan, uh, the pedestrian bicycle master plan. And, you know, as we take a look at what we would like to have within our area, if there's other places along the trails where we think something like that would be uh, nice to have, that could be added to the uh, public comments, you know, that can be made right now on that plan. The, the other thing is, is that, um, uh, you, you talked about the uh, signs along Route 2. The Vision Zero plan is also out for comment. And, you know, when you take a look at, first of all, all the signs that are required by the state or the county uh, along any one of the roads that are there for safety purposes and navigation and so forth. And then you add all of those other signs that, as you already pointed out, Ann, in many cases should not be there. You know, it's against the code. Uh, I think that that's something that, again, could be addressed within that uh, Vision Zero plan as a public comment, that it's a safety issue when, when you have all that competing signage out there. All right, thanks, Steve. Um, so to go back to the presentation, uh, Ann, uh, we're actually at the halfway mark of this, of the, of the driving tour. Uh, but we are kind of getting a little crunch for time. So I don't know how you all feel about a five minute break or anything like that. Well, I just as soon go through since we only have half an hour left, we might as well. I would like to see everybody's slides. Okay, great. So if, if there's no dire opinion against that, we can, we can continue on. So Tom, if you want to take the floor. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, my first slide is a Beechwood Park on, on the Magathy, and it is accessible from Magathy Bridge Road. And there's a large section of it that really is waterfront. Um, so it's just a beautiful place right now. Uh, there is, as far as I know, still on the table, uh, a proposal to put a boat ramp there. And if that's done in a judicious manner, that, that could be really great. If it's, um, if this is probably 15 to 20 minutes to get outside of the six mile per hour zone. So anyone who puts a boat in here, uh, a motorized boat anyway, would be qu taking quite a long trip to get to open water. Um, another thing about, uh, about this area, Beechwood Park along the river, is only one section of the park. There's another section immediately across Beechwood Park Road, and there's another section across Magathy Bridge Road. So one thing about these is that 
they probably could be turned into great parks, but they'd also be somewhat good sites to be sold off uh, for money to be used for other things. So we need to be vigilant uh, if we want to keep the entirety of Beechwood Park together. Next slide. Okay. These are pictures of Anne Arundel Community College. Uh, I actually went there many, many years ago. And one thing that I've been thinking about for years is that we could run a four-year institution out of Anne Arundel Community College because all of the infrastructure is, is there and you could start on a small scale and as you build through the years, 20 years from now, you could have a four-year institution. And some, I say some of that because first of all, the only other four-year schools uh, in this area are, are in region four anyway, um, are the Naval Academy and St. John's College in Annapolis. And as tuition costs go up, um, I know that I have two young grandchildren who say 15 to 20 years from now, want to go to college, I'm sure it's going to be tremendously expensive to go to the University of Maryland and some other schools. Um, also, I, I noted on here in 2019, AACC awarded 2,451 degrees. And that just seems very low to me. And I realize it does other, other good things in providing people opportunities, but that just seems like a very low number. Um, next slide. Okay. When I talk about negative or should be removed, the, the top two pictures, uh, I took one of those recently. Um, these are the, um, like the the soccer fields, the uh, baseball fields at the Chart Ridge community. And in the past 10 years or so, what started to happen at that location on a really heavy rain is it floods. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there were a number of um, news articles like in Severna Park Voice about this over those the past 10 years. And a lot of this came about with development of, of things like Sabrina Park, which is seems to be a cluster development that we talked about earlier. So these are things that if we could prevent, we'd, um, we'd be saving people a lot of heartaches because this is a hard thing to fight. Um, the bottom is, those bottom two slides or pictures, they are, a 1960s shot of the uh, amusement park that was at Maga Vista. Now that was closed down around the mid 60s and ultimately all that land was sold for development. So today on that site is the moorings. The Magathy has very few opportunities for people to get to the water. There's basically Beechwood Park and Spriggs Farm and they're not necessarily the best places to do it. But a lot of that has, has passed us by, but we still need to be vigilant in order to see opportunities for the future. Next slide. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're all familiar with Mount Misery. Um, there's been a lot of talk about this over the last uh, year or so, actually. And I didn't put this Mount Misery picture in here to be talking specifically about Mount Misery. I'm talking about the, the whole process, how much time goes into the development of one or two lots. And I learned some of this from 15 years or so ago when Dobbins Island did not have a house on it and the whole um, opportunity or the whole um, event took place 
where someone wanted to build a house on that island. So this slide is basically to consider the financial and the emotional costs of the variances that are granted for development. And every time a variance is granted, it's done so by a county employee and the legislative law that was voted on by the county council can be overturned by administrative employees. In some cases, that makes a lot of sense, but certainly not in all cases. That's it. Thanks, Tom. Um, so Ben submitted three photos. He was unable to attend tonight. Uh, he got called into a meeting in the last minute, I guess. Um, so I'll just run through his photos real quick. He didn't leave any speaker notes. So I'm just basically gonna read what's on the slide. Um, and we, we can have a group discussion after, uh, I think Steve is next after this. So his preserve, Ben's preserve was the, the BNA trail. Um, you, you know, it's, it's an outdoor environment, uh, a good, a fresh air, neighborly environment. Um, and maybe he, he wants to potentially connect it to a, a broader trail network as well. Uh, the next he had for an ad was very similar to what's already kind of been said tonight, gathering spaces. Um, and here's a couple that he, he uh, provided photos of, um, mostly for, uh, to add, add more for more community events uh, and really more recreational opportunities within the region. He did not uh, submit an R. Uh, as many of you probably know, R and K were probably the two harder uh, topics to come up with. So what he did. Okay. Lost Jared. So, so what Ben did to keep uh, for the K uh, was to keep out the uh, uh, accessory dwelling units that are not attached to the main um, residential unit. Um, and again, I don't know if you guys heard me or not, but uh, he did not submit an R, as I'm sure you guys are, are so familiar with, that the R and the K were the two hardest probably to come up with for a lot of people. So these were what Ben submitted, and I will pass it on to Steve is next, I believe. Great. Um, like Bo said uh, here at the beginning of the hour, that we received comments from both the, the Broadneck Council of Communities and also from the Arnold Preservation Council, uh, in addition to some individuals when we told them that we were gonna be doing this virtual tour. There were about 30 inputs. And, and although they're not gonna be obviously rec reflected on all these slides here, uh, they provide really a very good foundation to go forward with because we'll need to address many of those issues in our planning. But, one of the things that um, I think that we need to be taking a look at is the future availability of quality potable water. We already know that salt water is intrusing, intruding on many wells, private wells that are located around the shorelines. Uh, we know that there have been uh, issues with water quality that are, that are drawn from uh, some of the wells around the county and particularly uh, in our region. And also that we're having to move water from certain locations where we bring the water out of the aquifer to other sections of the county where there's more development going on. And certainly there's some costs and issues that are associated with that. Uh, the water and sewer plan for the county, which is updated every five years, I think is in the process of being updated right now. And I think that we should be paying attention to that plan as it goes through uh, its draft and review process. Next slide. Uh, we've talked an awful lot about the trails. I, I live very close to where the newest section of the Broadneck Trail is. Uh, I'm a bike rider and I'm a walker. It is amazing to me to just see how many people now are using uh, that trail out there. So getting the phase three trail uh, started, which I think is supposed to begin here uh, in the next month or two, as well as the extension of the trail that's gonna go eastbound 
to Sandy Point is going to be great. But one of the things that has got to be built into these plans is how you connect uh, the neighboring communities and the schools and other uh, important facilities to the trail. So, you know, there's uh, a couple of elementary schools that need to have connectors. Uh, Arnold Park is out there all by itself right now. We need to look for a way to get it connected to the trail as well for easier access. And I would put a plug again in for the draft um, pedestrian and bicycle plan. Uh, it, the plan is not actually posted on the county's website yet. It's just an opportunity for you to take a look at map of all the trail network within Anne Arundel County and make inputs on where uh, improvements could be made to that trail network. And, and that's gonna happen before we finish up our plan. Next slide. One of the most challenging issues uh, affecting uh, the quality of water within the bay is the nitrates that leach from uh, septic tanks. And I think most of us know that the county did uh, a big septic tank for us a couple of years ago. They identified over 40,000 septic tanks that are aging uh, around the peninsula and other places here in Anne Arundel County. We have some concentrations here on the Broadneck and the county is doing uh, a lot of good things along with the state to try and incentivize communities to hook up to uh, sewer and uh, sewer lines. At the moment right now, uh, the county has done such a great job with its upgrades of the water treatment plants that they're able to pull enough nitrates out from the sewage that they process that it's enabled to give credit to what otherwise would be a much larger challenge for the county in trying to meet the water quality standards because of these septic tanks. So in our planning, uh, that's probably something that we should be taking a look at. And then next slide. Uh, back in 2016, there was the major uh, intersections and important facility study that was done. It looked at seven major transportation quarters within Anne Arundel County. One of those was College Parkway. And although right now, uh, there's not any serious effort going on to actually begin design work and to fund what could be four lane widening on College, Park, uh, on College Parkway. And what we're talking about is extending the widening from right now, which uh, it goes four lane until about west of Jones Station Road. Um, but this would be from that point all the way down to Cape St. Clair Road. That, that has the potential of changing the entire character of the Broadneck Peninsula. And uh, Broadneck has been fairly successful through zoning right now to keep uh, commercial business off of that road uh, and to a limited degree uh, additional access from developments that might occur along that road. But, uh, but, but this is uh, an area of interest, if not midterm, long-term planning for our region plan. Yeah, and that's all I have. All right, thanks, Steve. Was there any any comment, any any uh, points of discussion you want to talk about with, um, I think, Tom, Ben, and, and Steve's slides? I wanted to ask Steve how they're going to connect the Broadneck Trail or the, the one that's coming past College Parkway to the BNA Trail. They talked about a bridge, you know, they've talked about different places. Are they really gonna connect? Yeah, that's a great question, Anne. Uh, and I had a separate slide on that because right now the connection is through that pocket park that you showed in your slide, through that adjacent neighborhood and then eventually ending up on route two by where the park and ride is. And, and I've been using that here recently because that's the only way I can get to the b &A trail. I have to go down College Parkway because uh, of the work that's being done at, East, at Joyce Lane right now at the bridge crossing at the b &A. and And so, so I've, I've seen, although that was a low cost solution to getting bicycles across that very busy portion of Route 2, uh, the, the answer should be having a bridge like what we have at uh, the east-west uh, parkway. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that is crossover route two so that bicyclists and pedestrians can get across that route safely. 
and, and not interfere with all the traffic and stuff on Route 2. Thank you. Um, Tom, I loved your idea with expanding AACC to offer um, four years of um, schooling. And I think that AACC has shown um, the high quality education it provides students all the time because of how well um, their programs are ranked. Like the nursing program comes to mind to me for that. But I think that that's um, something that would have to get planned with the other community colleges in the state and then at some level the University System of Maryland. So I think that that would they control all of the public universities in the state so but it's a great idea and there's so yeah, many people sorry, that yeah. um could benefit from it i understand that uh I, totally. I don't know the uh particulars of how that would have to work and um but i you know i think there may be benefits to the whole community college structures in maryland and maybe elsewhere when you're looking at the cost of higher education these days yeah, absolutely. Well, Melissa, do you have your hand um, up? Yeah, I just wanted to respond to Steve's um, slide about widening College Parkway, and I that I'm really concerned about the idea that if we just keep adding lanes to the roads, that that's somehow going to solve our traffic problems. And I just don't. We need to think outside of the box and do something else because I just think that's going to make things worse and it will change the character of that that part of Broadneck Peninsula. All right, thanks, Melissa. Uh, Bo? Uh, comment on just a couple of them, but back backing up on Melissa there, I agree that expanding College Parkway uh, is, is not something that I would like to see as it goes from where it is now down to down to Cape St. Clair, but then also uh, following up with uh, Steve on both his water and sewer slides is something I know we've had great discussions on in the past is the idea that uh, Steve always says it this way, I think, but if if you follow the water, you'll follow the development. The, 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 where there's water going to be built or laid or, or moved and understanding that plan is where you can then find the likely spots that most development is going to occur going forward. And at the same time, um, at that point in time, you, you may be able to help change what, what goes there in the future in terms of you know the land uh, zoning comprehensive changes that would be necessary to get the mixed use or parks or um, affordable housing or anything like that. Uh, I think that's uh, something that's important and obviously this, the sewer part, but uh, I, I assume we'll spend time learning more about those. I mean, if people haven't read and, and uh, read those plans, I know Steve has done extensive work on it over the years, and I'm certainly well familiar with it. But thanks, Bo. Uh, Holly. Sorry, I'm here. I'm in the car now, getting ready to pick up my kid. But um... because then there's we lost you holly wow can you hear me now mm -hmm. yeah we can hear you okay i was just gonna say um when they add lanes i've been told like once you add lanes can you still hear me mm -hmm. yeah okay once you add lanes go off to just like a vicious thing that happens Holly, you're cutting out a little bit. We 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 lost you a little bit there. So I'm gonna venture and say that she was mentioning induced demand uh, as the cause of added traffic uh, when it gets too easy and too fast to move from one place to the other because of new lanes. Then people just use their car more because then it's easier. <laughs> I think okay. if I if I got it right, I think that's what Holly was trying to mention. It sounded like it to me. And and if you've seen 97, I remember when 97 was going to cure all kinds of 
traffic problems, but boy, is it, if you go during rush hour, either going to Baltimore or back from Baltimore, it is packed, packed with traffic. If other people experienced it, because I couldn't believe how crowded it was. Uh, Melissa, did you have another comment? Your hand's still up. Okay. All right. Um, seeing nothing else, uh, we have five people left. To, uh, so if it's okay, we can kind of, if it's okay with everybody else to group those five together and have a discussion at the end, and then we can finish the presentation and move on. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. So uh, Shayla had to leave. Uh, she sent me a message. So um, I'm just going to go through hers a little bit. There's no speaker notes again, but it, it's a bunch of similar uh, topics we've already kind of covered. Uh, so the, the BNA trail, rest area, um, more, higher quality life, uh, more recreation opportunities, uh, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Again, addition of, of different trails and uh, bike paths, uh, stuff to that nature. It was her ad. The, her remove was the English Ivy. Um, I, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything because I don't know exactly where, where she's coming from. But I, I think we can all kind of maybe come up with a with an, an idea and understanding here. Um, so then, she did not have a K. So, so then, uh, Walter, the floor is yours. Hey, thank you very much. I'm going to blow right through it. Uh, we all love the parks. Uh, Downs Park is a very pretty one. Uh, well done, attractive, great crossings, more of these. Uh, preserve them. Uh, next slide, please. All right, uh, water access. Um, so um, the, and this is kind of on a little bit about uh, what Bo said about Holly Beach Farm. And I agree that Holly Beach Farm, uh, it, it would it'd probably be something none of us would ever get to use. And it's not in a good spot, but we do need to bump up water access for people that don't live in privileged communities. Um, and uh, to Tom's point, um, we can put some attention into the county properties that do have access um, and focus on those as opposed to these grand schemes to acquire property that's really gonna be difficult to access. Um, that one picture up there on the right, that is, I believe that's Weinberg Park. There's no parking and the gate's closed. So um, that's kind of silly. People I talked to there said, gee, it'd be nice if you could uh, you know, get into the park. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, signage um, and great information on the ineffectiveness of our sign ordinance. I thought it was just a lack of enforcement, <laughs> but apparently um, they're, these are okay. I mean, my understanding is that these promotional flippy flags are okay for a temporary event, but they can't stay up permanently. You drive around the county, you see them just tattered. They don't come down and they're there forever. You see the, the small, little, uh, you know, power washing, um, uh, we buy junk cars, stuff like that. They just sit there forever. And I don't want to begrudge people their ability to put stuff out there, but, uh, you know, maybe um, not let it be so junked up. Uh, and again, that's an example of a road with no curb. And uh, Bo, that was great intel on why Emerald County has no curbs. Um, also, you'll see a little private property sign there. Um, that's actually access to some uh, open space. Um, and I think that sign's a bit misleading. Um, and that's an example of neighborhoods um, being afraid of uh, people being able to get into public land that we've bought with our tax dollars that uh, we should be able to access. Next slide. Okay, that's a vacant house. Um, somebody else touched on that. Uh, I believe, and thank you. Um, anything we can do uh, to ease the way for folks to, to get in, get these properties and put them back online, um, I think would be just fantastic. That's actually across from Beachwood Park. So, mm -hmm. and that's all I've got, I think. Yep. Thanks, Walter. Thank uh, Holly, the floor is yours. 
Oh, geez. Okay. I am picking up my daughter, but I have five minutes. So let's see. Um, the, uh, okay. So about this, Eric, did you get my email with the YouTube video link that explains this beaver um, slide a little bit more? I don't know if we could put that in the chat. For sure. Um, I will. I'll, I can, I, and if, if I don't, I'll check my email. And if it's not there, I will, I can send it, I can forward it to everybody tonight as well. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just, it was really cool. I wanted to point out that um, sometimes these cool habitats lend to, you know, we should preserve them. I'm sorry. My brain's not going to be functioning because I'm looking out for her. Um, and so, yeah, they created their own dam and let's preserve them. Yay. Next slide. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, cross country and hiking trails. So I know that Bacon Ridge Trail in Cromsville is um, pretty popular and we don't have anything like that in, I guess, Region 4. Maybe we do have some things like that. But in Severna Park, there's an area between like White's Road, Jennings Road type, um, between Benfield and Ritchie Highway and Truck House, where that I think would have um, could make some really good cross country and hiking trails because we don't have any of that. We have Kinder Farm, which is amazing, and it just has some hiking. But um, just worried about the, which will go onto the fourth slide, but not right now. But just I'm worried about the impact of density housing in the Cattail Creek area since Severna Park, particularly. I don't, I'll be honest, I don't know that much about other sections of the county. Like, I live in Severna Park. I do most of everything in Severna Park. I grew up in Severna Park. So I don't, I'm not going to pretend to know that much about the rest of the county. Um, but I do know that Severna, Severna Park can be pretty swampy and um, the land is soft and I worry about the density housing. So I think a great way to preserve um, that area that hasn't been developed so much that I'm talking about in the White Road Jennings Road area would be to do um, hiking trails, cross country trails, stuff like that. Next slide. Cool, I'm going to miss her. Uh, the blue house, the blue tower house. I think everyone knows that. I saw that in someone else's um, slides too. So, uh, and then, yeah, the early heist connector house. There's lots of famous jokes about it and all that stuff um, that needs to be gone. It's dangerous. I could probably take a picture of me standing on one side of it to the other. And then the last slide. Okay. Oh, yeah. So um, the infrastructure there, the, like I said, the housing, the land just can't handle that kind of density housing. And I put the Chart Ridge area there. Um, they had a flood from um, a couple of years ago in their um, rec area, and uh, which, which is why I'm saying it's just any kind of density housing just we can't and it goes along with what Bill was talking about too with those modifications like they make modifications saying oh it'll be okay for this one particular piece of land but really it's just not in Severna Park I mean we're we're a swamp land between two rivers so that's it well, thanks Holly and I we appreciate you uh being on the phone while you're picking up your your, your daughter so thank you for that uh two left uh, John Spencer all right thank you uh, my preserve was uh, the suburban character region four. I probably talked to in the neighborhood of 30 people and in virtually every conversation this came up, they like things in the Severna Park, uh, Pasadena, Arnold area to maintain a suburban character. And this was taking place, uh, this was taken, I try to do like a 30, 40 minute walk each day and this is on one of my walks and it's probably about a mile actually from where I live. And uh, the solution was preserve lower density being zone via zoning map and land use. Okay, next slide, please. This is this is Mountain Road. Oops, sorry, we're <laughs> too far. Okay, this is uh, Duval Highway. This is actually five blocks from where I live. The neighborhood, as a couple of people touched on, was goes back to the early. I think the first house was probably built in 1931. It's a real mixed bag, but it's on the way between High Point Elementary School and Northeast High School. And four years ago, I brought up uh, my Texas granddaughter and who's been living with us since then. And this is part of her walk to Northeast High School. And you can see that there's no, absolutely no sidewalks. And the way that tree is there, 
you can stand there and you can touch cars going by. And it's just like several blocks like this. But the good news is at least this is in the, the upgrading Duval Highway to add a sidewalk from uh, High Point Elementary to the remaining section of Duval Highway is funded for maybe three years from now. Uh, next slide. Okay, here, this is, this is Mountain Road. And uh, I've looked at a few planning studies in my life, and I'm sure that Lorenzo and Eric might empathize with this, that when you see before and after pictures, you usually always see a before picture that shows overhead utilities. And then when you see the, the pretty diagram of the utopia in the future, there's no above ground utilities. And so you can see on both sides, you have telephone poles, which interfere with walking because there's no fixed sidewalks here, as well as cars entering and exiting mountain roads. So it's, it's a mess. And uh, again, people have touched on traffic congestion. I can't wait until we have that discussion. Okay, uh, next slide. And this is what I would like to keep out high rise development. And I understand I may be in conflict with myself about uh, suburban nature and traffic congestion, but we'll get to that later on. But I just don't see the nature of, of, of Pasadena, especially going high rise. And if you look at a map, you look away, the crime is coming down, Ritchie Highway essentially, and the drug overdoses and deaths. Uh, I don't wanna, turn into something like Baltimore. I hope we can learn something from Baltimore City of what not to do. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, John. And last but not least, Michael. All right, thanks. I'll breeze through these. Um, preserve, this is Kinder Farm Park. I think I heard a couple of folks had that on their slides. Uh, great place to go, go there with the kids and certainly want something want to preserve. A, what do I have her add? Um, yeah, sort of a, a town center like feeling mixed use, feeling a mixed use type community gathering spaces for the community where you've got retail, you've got um, residential, you've got hangout spots, you know, I see you know, music, band, just, just a great hangout spot for the community. I think that's, I'd like to see more of that. I don't think I had an R, but I think the R would, would probably be removing things to allow for the what I had in the A. So if it's expansive parking lots that are underutilized, removing those to allow for those things. And the keep out, same thing Holly had, the house on Novely, um, or uh, what's that? Drawing a blank on, on the street name, but Early Heights. Um, just that's just not, not sure we got built that close to the road. It, it should have wheels being that close to the road. So, but that's it. All right. Thanks, Michael. Um, I know we crossed the eight o'clock um, minute, but do we, uh, still to be fair, uh, is there any conversation or discussion points anybody wants to, to mention about what we just saw through the last five? I thought there were a lot of really interesting ideas and a lot of commonality of some of the solutions and some of the issues. So well, it's very well done. I think there was an interesting issue raised with uh, uh, priority funding, sewer plan, and where the development's gonna go. And I really am looking forward to figuring out how all of that melds together. Uh, Holly, you have your hand raised? Yes, I do. I was just going to comment about the signage um, that I went to a town. I went to Chestertown in to visit a friend and there I, I don't know what they're doing right, but it was amazing the way their signs blend in with the rest of the community. And um, I don't know if we can look up some of their ordinances or laws or regulations or, or whatever, but it was really impressive the way their signs were able to blend in. So maybe we can take some uh, tips from them. Sounds good. All right, um, seeing nothing else, there are two just wrap up slides, um, very quick, very brief. Um, one thing before um, before I, I get to those, it sounds like we, we talked a lot, we all talked about a lot of different uh, unique aspects throughout the, the driving tour. And one really cool thing that we're gonna be doing throughout this process is touching on almost every single one of those from mixed use to parks, 
uh, public facilities. Th those are topics we're going to be discussing throughout this, and it, it's it's glad we're all kind of there. Uh, I know Lorenzo is very excited that a few of you mentioned the mixed use component. He is working on a study right now, and uh, come August, I think we're going to have a uh, charrette activity planned if uh, everything goes well with regarding mixed use. So um, keep that in mind, and it, it, it's a it, we're on a good path. So just to wrap up real quick, um, be on the lookout for just a couple things. Uh, the public outreach feedback map will hopefully go live uh, this coming Monday, if not definitely the first week of, of March, um, where we're shooting for February 28th for it to go live. Uh, as Lorenzo touched on earlier, we're gonna have physical versions of these in the libraries as well. Um, and so anybody who attends the library in the region will be able to physically put a, put a note onto, a, onto the map and have access to the internet if they would show, so choose to do that. The, the current uh, survey on the hub site is closing March 1st. Uh, once that's wrapped up, uh, we will be able to kind of evaluate all those responses and that data. Our next meeting date will be March 28th at 6 p.m. It is a Monday, it is the fourth Monday of, of March. Just so be aware, I will be sending out an invite shortly uh, in the next day or two. And then as, as mentioned earlier, we are going to have a public forum in April. The date's still being decided. All those uh, technicalities is, is being finalized right now, but it's essentially going to be a kickoff style type virtual event for the public to ask questions and um, go from there. So, uh, and then finally, just again, if anybody from the member of the public has any questions, uh, here are the contact information for uh, county staff and the chair and vice chair. So, and if, if that's all we had, Anne, so I'm gonna pass it back to you. Well, I think we, we need a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Can I ask a quick question? Sure, why not? Ab about when we're meeting, or uh, uh, so far it sounds like uh, we're gonna be doing Zoom meetings indefinitely is there a chance we're going to get the in-person situation sometime that's something that we can discuss uh, as far as i know um we are staying with the virtual component for at least for the next two two months or so but i think maybe we can have a discussion about that as as a region for sac um maybe potentially the next meeting okay what's holding us back from having them in person I know there are a few different or uh, there are some county uh, meetings that are still being held virtually. And uh, I'm I'm may, I just need to make sure that we're not crossing any um, COVID restriction or anything like that if we meet in person. OK, because this is a people process and it seems strange not to have people in the same area. Yeah, absolutely. And we're allowed to hold our police meetings in person at, at the district headquarters this month again. So. We were told it was all dropped in the county buildings. Right. So. And as of saying, last Tuesday. Eric, you're saying for sure the next meeting it will be Zoom or be remote? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think just just for the for the discussion purpose of, of today, because we, we can discuss the in-person meeting as, as a SAC. Uh, next meeting if, if if you'd like or i can reach out and we can see if we can get an in-person meeting for the month of march if you would like that would be great i really support that okay so i i will do i will ask staff and i will see what what we we can do and then i will be sure to inform everybody uh as soon as possible um via email and we will go from there and uh we we may have to uh, find a good location ahead of time, but uh, I will definitely be in touch and let you guys know what, what I find out. Thank you. Anything else anybody wants to bring up before the motion to adjourn? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Ah, hold on one second. Can I ask a question? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I've been trying. Okay. Um, I just, if, if the meeting is held in person, can we have locations because um, my ability to get to a place uh, that's central will also be contingent on that. Um, I would love to have in-person meetings, but just can't go super far away. So that's all, sorry. 
going once, going twice. We have a motion to adjourn and we had a second, I believe. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Well, see you all within a month. So it was nice to see more of you. I was happy we could see each other more. So and thanks for doing that, Eric. That was good. That was a good idea, Ann. Good idea. <laughs> good night all. Good night. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Good night. Oh crap.